Welcome back to another Diablo 4 video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the lack of proper navigation and map overlay. It's a massive complaint in the community and we have some responses we want to go over. Plus, this mechanic in Diablo 4 is killing players constantly and players aren't particularly happy about it. And BlizzCon is upon us. We got a few topics to cover here today, so let's begin. Oh, and by the way, if you do enjoy any of the content on the channel, do leave a like. And more importantly, if you'd like to see more content like this, a subscribe will go a long way. Starting this thing off, check out this post. It has over 2,000 upvotes. What my brain sees in 95% of the open world. And as you can see, he just basically sees the mini map, and this is kind of how I play. And I do want to go over a quick response. Joe Shealy said it is important because he believes incorrectly that the gameplay loop in ARPGs is navigation over fighting. It's honestly just dev ego 1000%. You think you do, but you don't. They will eventually cave to players asking for it. Just hope it's sooner than later. Now, for me personally, I constantly stare at the overlay map. Not the overlay map because it, it doesn't exist, but the little tab map that Intru very intrusive and I just can't see the entire screen at all because I can't navigate and this is absolutely something they really need to get a hold of now I will say I am very neutral when it comes to my approach when I talk about blizzard or my feedback because I like to be fair but this is one of the things that really irked me early on in Diablo was this whole you think you want it but you don't think that I believe either was Joe Shealy or was Rob Ferguson that said that when we said that we wanted the overlay map. Now for me, I don't really like being gaslit. And I think this is a very unhealthy way of saying that we're lazy and we don't want to put an overlay map in the game. I think it's really horrible. But at the moment, I cannot navigate without looking at the mini map. And I, the, the thing that upsets me the most about this whole situation isn't the fact that it does isn't in the game, it's the excuse that they gave, which was the, the most, honestly, it's the most horseshit excuse I've ever heard. That you're not going to be paying attention to the game and it's going to we want you to pay attention to the map it's so stupid i think like any logical reasonable player all through the facade and was like yeah that's just you being lazy we don't look at the mini map because we want to or the map because we want to like not look at the game we look at it because we need navigation the same way that if you're going to a place you still want to observe what you're looking at right but if you have a gps you use the GPS so you know how to get to the place you're going. And this is the same exact like concept. We don't like use the mini map because we don't want to look at the game. We use it because we want to navigate. And I just think that's just such a stupid excuse or reason for like suggesting that we, we don't want what we want. That's just it's very off putting. Honestly, they need to get a hold of it. This is actually pretty big topic right now on like Reddit and the devs do seem to look at reddit a lot and i think it's going to get bigger and bigger over the next couple of days and weeks so expect some type of response from this I, I i personally expect but yeah let me know what you guys think down in the comments do you guys prefer a overlay map or would you like to continue to press tab and have your entire screen covered while we're on the topic of quality of life check out this post on twitter by bd pulse diablo 4 desperately needs a group finder or a party finder it was one of the main components in the past which made Diablo so fun. There are dozens of posts on Reddit with thousands of users who agree with this. Is this something you got, you've been hearing? And he sent this to uh, Adam Fletcher. Now Adam Fletcher did respond by saying, We addressed this on the Campfire chat stream. It's a thing we've been hearing more of a quality of life feature for the future as we continue to evolve and update the game. So it does look like we're going to be getting some form of LFG or some type of group finder situation. Like currently in the game, you kind of have to go to a third party website through Discord and find a group like that. And honestly, it's, it's, it's terrible. I hate it. I hate anything ran by players. But for me, like they really need to add some type of group finder. I was actually trying to farm some dungeons and it took me like an hour to find a proper group or I would try to communicate with people in the game but you can't actually like single them out and talk to them like i have to talk and say chat and hope that the person stops moving and like respond to me which is like not really common most people just keep walking by um, and it's very frustrating because there's no like basic lfg feature there's just a trade chat which we use to communicate 
I don't know what's going on with this. Let me know what you guys think about this. Would you like actually like an LFG dungeon fight? I know a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, actually want this in the game. I imagine you guys want it too, but yeah, gotta get on top of this, guys. Shifting gears a little bit, check out this post. Too many mobs explode on death. If the mob type doesn't naturally explode on death, it's given by elite affixes. It's neither a fun nor interesting mechanic and just creates a situation where you can't even relax after you've killed an enemy. Add to this that it's often really hard to see the decks, death explosions and that the damage is ridiculously high. I can't grasp why they made this mechanic so common. I, I don't actually agree completely with this post that there's too many of them. I don't think there's actually too many death effects. I just think that they're not very clear. That's, that's really where I stand. It's hard to see them. And then when there's multiple mobs that can like have like on ground effects plus cc plus like you, there's no like diminishing returns on ccs like that's when it gets a little too crazy for for my my taste like i'm fine with being able to pay attention to death on death effects but i think when it's like surrounded by other mobs that can't like can control your your uh, character and on top of that then there's some that has multiple death explosions so there'll be like fire poison and then maybe a pool of poison that you really can't see under the bodies that's where i feel like we need to uh adjust things let me know though what you guys think about this i'm not a fan of the on death explosions i think they need to tone down the damage by like 30 percent but most importantly just visual clarity is the problem i think when it comes to the death effects they're just not fun and i don't think you should be dying to things after death i think that should be reserved for like a handful of things which in my opinion there aren't too many but still it's a little annoying you shouldn't be dying to things you already killed i think there's a delicate balance you can put for this all right on to the final post of the day check out this this is from adam fletcher blizzcon is upon us first wave of tickets is july the 8th um, and then you'll be able to have two full days of BlizzCon, opening ceremony, panel discussion, community night, and Overwatch World Cup. No one's watching that. And more. You'll have be able to do the details there. Um, I will say I wanted to go to BlizzCon. I'm probably not going to be able to make it until next year. Um, but for those of you who are wondering, I know this is July the 8th and Season 1 is coming. Adam Fletcher did confirm that Season 1 won't be until mid to late July. So... If you do decide to go to BlizzCon, you're not going to actually not be able to participate in Season 1. Just a little bit of food for thought. I mean, some of you probably live in California, so it's not a big deal. You can just, like, go home. But, um, yeah, if you do go to BlizzCon, you won't be missing out on Season 1. Now, on to my favorite part of the video. This is you guys' comments. As I say in every video, if you do have a comment, feel free to leave it down below. And I very likely would put it in the video and respond to it. Especially the stupid ones, because I love those. On to our first comment, and this one is from Josh. How did you not do any nightmare dungeons and know about teleporting to it? Now, not to be a smartass, I will be honest with you. I generally am like in the loop of Diablo 4 no matter what it is I do from a day-to-day -day basis. So I've only not played Diablo one day since like it came out. But like if I'm not looking at Diablo or playing Diablo that day, I'm looking at it. I'm going on Twitch and watching someone play. I'm watching Adam Fletcher. I'm looking at the notes. Generally, I'm in tune with um, Diablo 4 as a content creator. So also it's just like I can see people post about it. But I actually did play the game. When I say sometimes when I say I like didn't do any di nightmare dungeons, I mean I didn't do a meaningful amount of them to give a like accurate representation of my uh, ideas of what a nightmare dungeon. I did like one or two at the time of making that that video. So like I understand the teleporting thing, but I didn't like have the data for if the XP was worth it. And that's kind of what I meant by it. But with that said, I did do like 60 dungeons last night. I, I literally mean 60 dungeons last night. So I have a, a good grasp of them now. But yeah, that's, that's how. Now on to the next comment. And this is response to me talking about the horses that we talked about yesterday where um, the horseback riding is just terrible and there's just needs to be a lower cooldown or in this yada yada yada. This one from Mama Cracked and this says all the restrictions with the horse are because of PvP. 
which really sucked. And also by Mr. Graham Ba, I am willing to bet that the horse remounting crap is all because of PvP. And I believe so as well. Pretty much the reason why that we, we basically have the horse cooldown is because of PvP. But here's the problem with that. The vast majority, if not everyone, uses mounting and the vast minority plays PvP. And if you have a condition centered around the garbage PvP, and I'm just calling it how it is, like I generally love PvP, I adore PvP in games, I actually almost never play games that don't have it, but Diablo 4's implementation is as I expect it based on their like PvP is not meant to be fair thing they did before the launch is garbage. Um, but um, I feel like there's a reasonable solution for this, just like how potions have a longer cooldown in the PvP zones. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Um, in the open world, you can literally do the same thing outside of those zones and have a lower cooldown in those, and it won't even impact the PvP at all. So uh, yeah, that's absolutely the reason why they have it, but I'm pretty sure they can change it fairly easy. All right, on to the last comment of the day, and this one's from Hardwire Gaming. Go check him out. He's a fellow content creator. And he says, W patch, they need to bring up the whole not work on balancing right now before season one, I feel. Um, I agree and I disagree. I do think that they need to um, work on balancing right now. Um, but actually the balancing that they did, like I agree, it's definitely a W patch. And I think a lot of things have been addressed, mainly in quality of life, not really from skills. But the, in the grand scheme of things, skills really didn't change anything because actually the thing that needs to be changed is how they core fundamentally work. Like ice, a lot of things got like damage increases, but that's really not the problem. Like some of that is the problem, but a lot of it is just how vulnerable works and how crit works and how the damage buckets work. And that's kind of the problem. For example, like I don't want to give you guys a whole entire like breakdown of it, but those who want to hear the reason why bone spear is so much more dominant than like the other ones is because bone spear has built in crit damage and crit scaling it has built in vulnerable guaranteed on throws and when you compare it to other skills like for example if you use um blood surge blood surge has a overpower base scaling which has a three percent chance that can't scale like it literally can't scale according to the tooltip so you only can use effects that guarantee overpower so let, like Rothmund's Vigor which has a 12 second cooldown which means comparatively to Bone Spear which has a no cooldown it's just an essence cost which which Blood Search have as well uh, you have a 12 second downtime which it does have a way to scale it which is uh, every five attacks you can guarantee an overpower but that requires attack speed that requires more resource sustain um, and still there's a, a five time cast downtime and the resource sustain that we just talked about isn't actually built into the Paragon board. It's actually built on the Bone Tree Paragon board, which has resource sustain. And that's where you'll see a reason why I, I think that the problem isn't going to be fixed in a few patches. It's just a core design problem. The reason why Bone Spear is so much more dominant is because it has resource sustain, crit, vulnerability scaling. All this that's reliable and easy to put on whereas other skills for example like that one doesn't have reliable ways of getting it in a meaningful way and that's why you don't see any blood surge builds killing uber lilith and you see blood, uh, spears being thrown at her and killing her four spears anyway done with my rant i really appreciate you guys watching the video i do have some pretty interesting content coming up i do have like uh, a few builds coming up in the next couple days uh, but yeah, really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. Later.